Real Animals Fishing Show is presented by Yellowfin Yachts. Hey gang, today Billy and I are fishing out of O'Neill's Marina, beautiful St. Pete Beach. The water, the day is absolutely incredible. Our good friend Captain Lee Blick, he's on the kingfish. We're in the new yellowfin, don't touch that dial. Catching big kings, gonna be off the hook. We ran about five miles offshore this morning, just to a piece of hard bottom, just to the west of St. Pete Beach. And it's just a real good area. A lot of bait shows up here. Uh, the kingfish show up here just about every year when they come through, they come through in really big numbers. Um, you, sometimes you don't have to run this far. There's a lot of fish on the beach, but this area has been really productive the last couple of days. So kind of why we started here. Uh, again, we got a nice light east wind, so it's a perfect drive. You're just a couple miles offshore, it's perfect. Fish on! Be a little shark? I'm thinking, I don't know, he's just kind of, whatever it was, he swam over this way with it. Yeah, he went in this hole, it was a grouper. <laughs> you got hold up, dog. Yeah, he went back in this hole. There we go, we got him out. Real, daddy, oh, real. Mean I'm it, mean to... it, mean it, big man. Mean it, real, real, I'm going real. To, I just got to tighten that drag up a little bit. Is that one following it? Yep, that's yeah. another grouper following him. Dude, look at this, a big rat it looks like. Huh? Look, look at his buddy, his buddy's like, yeah, that's nice. That's in the slot too, bro, it looks like. a or a guy? That's a red, yeah. nice red. Yeah, that one could go to Lee's house for dinner if it was another 15 days. Yeah. <laughs> That's the nice part about this, is there's your bycatch. <laughs> it's kind of bad when, one of your when, when groupers a bycatch. Yeah, nice little red fire truck grouper, huh? It's like a good fish. Real pretty fish. What are we doing, Lee? We're gonna cut some bait up and chum them up. Yeah, you like to you like to get them going with the cut up ones. Yeah, I like to get them the cut up yeah, bait get first. A get a little smell water. going out there. Get them circulating going. And we'll do start taking some live ones and squeezing them. Tease them with the cut bait. Then we'll start throwing them with some live ones out there. Take a handful of live baits. All we're doing is we take some pilchers. We got them this morning on the bridge. There in Tampa Bay, kind of squeeze them a little so they don't swim off right away. Kind of get a little circus going out here. Lee's got the cut bait going. Beautiful day. God, look at this. I'll tell you, the water temp is just perfect, too. Yeah, it is. If you look at it, we're, we're sitting right at 71.8. 72 degrees for the Gulf is kind of that magic temperature where everything starts to happen. The bait pods start to show up. The kingfish are right, here. Right, Spanish right, mackerel. Birdie. We're getting birdie. So we're getting birdie. I noticed on the way out this morning, it was riding right there. Inshore was sitting just above 72. Out here, five, six miles offshore, 71.8 degrees. So perfect water temp, everything is right. Everything is right for a beautiful day on the water. Hey, you guys, hey, guys, you, you guys are fishing like they do in Mississippi. Y'all doing that bayou fishing. They're gonna fish right there by you. <laughs> Come on, honey. Come on, big kingfish. There he is, kingfish, baby. Where are we at, Lee? There it is. Thanks, buddy. That's what we wanted. Yes, sir. I told you, dude. I told you, didn't I? Did I call it? <laughs> oh, he is not happy. He is not. He is not happy at all. He's just throwing a rooster tail behind our line. That's a big one. I say big. They're all big, you know, when they're on my line. It doesn't matter if he's two pounds. He's big. He's a he's a horse. Beautiful color on that fish. Look at that guy. And they got teeth like you would not believe. Hey, I don't know, he's about what, 10 pounds, Michael? Oh yeah, probably 15, easy. It's a good fish. It's kind of a schoolie king. Maybe yeah. A little bigger than schoolie. It's a good fish. And yeah, we'll get some more. I'm trying to get him over to you, Bubba. We just had to break the ice here him. on the new boat. That's 
Oh, there he goes. Nice. Good release, Daddy. Keep the boat clean. Thanks. We're just kind of free lining the baits. Just pitch them out back, let them kind of free swim in the tide a little bit. As long as you got tide movement, you'll get a really nice presentation that way. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on them. Although, you know, a lot of guys troll for kingfish. Trolling is a real popular way to catch them. A lot of the SKA teams, that's how they catch them. Um, it's a good way to catch maybe some of your bigger fish. In an area like this where you have so many fish concentrated, you can just anchor up like we are, chum them up. We'll get them going here in the back of the boat pretty soon and uh, it'll be fish on. But you can troll for them too if you want to. But this is a nice relaxing way to do it. It's a really good way to do it with the family. You know, you don't have quite as much going on with the trolling and worrying about fouling lures and baits and all that stuff. You can just come out here, kind of let the family have some fun, relax a little bit, put some baits out behind the boat and catch fish. So that's how we're choosing to do it today. We'll see if it works for us. Fish on! Yeah, baby. What do you think, Mickle? I think it's a kingfish. A kingfish? The action's so fast and furious that it's just really exciting. When they come through and start feeding, it's, it's really spectacular. If you're, if you're holding the rod when they hit, I swear it feels like it's gonna break your arm off because, I mean, it's just so fun. <laughs> they hit it going so fast. Yeah, they do. Smokers, it's the reason they call them that. Mm-hmm. Them big ones, you ain't that one. Man, I hope we get a big one. Yeah, that'd be nice. It would be. I don't care. I, dude, I'm just catching fish. I don't big care. Big smile on the face. It's all good. Good job, Daddy. Same fish just came back to visit us. Yes, yeah, his cousin. I wish I got that D hooker in here. I'll tell you what, a good pair of gloves, too, messing with this wire. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, that's the way to go. Get him up here and take a look at him, dude. Oh, I'll do it. Come here. I got your slack on the top. I'm trying to get my hand ain't long enough. I'm not. Here, here we go. Short on. I can get his. There we go. So if you bite me, there we go. That was eyes, yeah. And you know when fish do that, I got a buddy of mine. He swears what works real good. I've never tried it, but if you take like some rum and spray on their gills. Cause you got rum with hey, you all the time. I got rum. <laughs> early times, baby, early times. You know it. Sink the shallow your, road, baby. There, oh, a little 15 pounds. Let's let this guy go. And when you, water, when you put them in the water, you want to torpedo them in. Like that. And there he goes. kick, kick. There he goes, he kick. Good job, Daddy-o. Oh, boy. Nice. Yeah, what we're using is a, uh, is a stinger rig. It's made by Spro Corporation, which is a part of Gamagatsu. So we got the Gamagatsu, good quality sharp hooks. That's the main thing. You want to have a good quality hook. And you can make these yourself. We've got a one-aught hook here and a treble hook down. These, these treble hooks are a little different. They got a little pin that just pins in the side of the bait, so it'll be on his side if so. Got a wire leader all the way up to a ball bearing or to a barrel swivel. And then we've got 40-pound mono to 30-pound braid. Um, the thing, that you, like I said, you can make these yourself, but the typical thing is you want to run about four pounds of drag because when these kings hit, they, they'll hit the bait right in the middle. So envision him grabbing this wire in the middle, the hooks come back and grab him. And that's how you hook them up. And that's the method to the madness. Come on, kingfish. Double trouble. Oh, he's running at the boat. He's running at the boat. God doing Mach 10. Where you at, Anderson? Out, you get up high. Under you. All right, come on. I lucked out there because I never reset my drag. I lucked out there because he jumped on it. Dude, you see that skyrocket? Wow. We're in. All right. Come anyway, don't come you on. Know. Playing through, playing through. We got a double header here. Good fish. You got to really just kind of take your time. This one's this is a good fish right here. We'll kind of watch too is as Lee hits this fish with the gaff, kind of watch the technique he uses. He's going to come in underneath it. Lee's like, no pressure. Yeah, you're on <laughs> national television, don't screw up the, don't gaff it. <laughs> It'd help if your angler would help you out a little bit. Well, he is not happy. It's a good fish. 20 pound fish, huh? There you go, perfect. He came up underneath, stuck it real good. That's a good fish. 
Well, hang on, let me get the hook out of it. Be a lot easier after that. You can see this one got him with the rig too. That's a good, that's a good king. That one we got with the stinger rig. That's what was in them right there. And a lot of times they'll miss. They'll hit the back side of that bait. They'll miss the main hook. That's why we fish with those stinger rigs right there. Catch a bunch of fish. Don't touch that dial. We'll be back catching kingfish on the other side. Closed captioning brought to you by Gator Ford. Captain Lee Blake, good friend of mine, he showed me this spot a few weeks ago and the kingfish have just been here. We got here and it's just been, it's been going nuts since we've been here. So just a real good time to be out here kingfishing. They've just rolled in about a week and a half ago and it has been off the chain out here. So it's been a lot, a lot of fun. Get him, Lee. Playing through, playing through. I hope he doesn't get that other anchor over there. See, I don't see the I don't see the float moving. Dude, that's a big fish, Lee. He's he's, he's we may want to take that one to the house. I may have to fire up the smoker tonight and just let it smoke all night. Yeah, he's good. Good fish. Yeah, he's right out there. Out of boy. Out of boy. Boy, I just got him too. Oh! Got him. You got my pot. You got your pliers? Nice fish. That's a good fish. That is a good fish. Good fish. Nice job, Lee. Send boy. him home, Daddy-o. We'll come back and get you. Sweet. There you go. Swimming all. Thanks for playing. Thanks. Big kingfish bite got a little bit crazy. Everybody's caught one. We've had a double on. Been pretty steady action out here. We're on kind of a, a slow tide. The better the tide is, the better the bite's gonna be. We're on the quarter moon right now, which isn't, you know, I wouldn't say it's ideal, but as you can see, we're still catching plenty of fish. We've been here for about an hour, five, six kingfish to the boat. Bite's pretty good. So could be better, but I think we got nothing to complain about. Life is good. Oh, look at him, look at him. Whoa. I'm going crazy, Lee. Yeah, he just comes skyrocketing out of the water. There we go, I'm going to hit him again over there. See him? Yeah, yeah. That'll come skyrocketing out of there. Chasing that school of pit, um, bait fish we threw out. Is that what's going on? Yeah, they, they, the bait is school up in the school. Mm -hmm. They'll swim on the surface, and you see they're just blowing oh, up underneath it. Yeah. They start from the bottom, just whoosh, they come up, just skyrocketing. I don't know if this is a king or not. We'll find out here in just about. I think we have a king. Playing through Willis. I think, yes, yeah, it's Spanish, but he's just, he's hooked all goofy. He, yep, yeah, got him right in the belly. Big Split. Spanish, though. It is. Now, those are tasty eating critters. So, Spanish mackerel, this is the. Little cousin in the mackerel family, you got the ones that we have around here, which further south, we have the kings, we have a Ciro mackerel, and the Spanish mackerel. Further north, you get the Boston mackerel. But they all got teethuses. And you need to be real careful. Those teeth, they've got a bacteria that keep the blood from coagulating, or won't allow it to clot. So if they bite you, you're gonna bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed. Set the pigeon loose. Sweet. Now that is what I feed my chickens. There you go. Whenever you're offshore, birds are always a good sign. Birds means that the bait is in the area, and wherever the bait are, that's where your game fish are going to be. They're not going to be far from the bait. Great indicator. Always look for the bird. Spanish, Billy? Um, I think it's a king, the way he's up top. A uh, little spanny mac. Little kingfish, I believe. A little king. A little king. Little. Even a little guy, look little, at him. I mean, kingfish. even little guys are just powerful. But that's what I was saying before asking you before how much you weighed because, I mean, you had your weight trying to hold that fish down and he was yeah. just bucking you like, you know. When they get up in the boat, they're not, they're not happy. Necessarily very happy. <laughs> oh, that is a little, that's a schooly king, a true schooly right mm -hmm. there. Little five, seven pound fish, maybe. All day fun. 
Oh, these are these are perfect. This is a good kingfish for kids right here. They're yeah. in the spots. And that's why people get them juveniles confused with Spanish mac. Because they got the spots. Mm -hmm. Just a pretty fish. Nice. Great game fish. Good and job, Billy. Hey guys, today Bill and I are here with our good friends at Gator Ford in Tampa for this week's Tip of the Week. Before you guys go out fishing, there's a few things on your trailer you need to check out. Make sure the hitch and the ball are the same size, that the lever is all the way down. Make sure your chains are crisscross underneath the tongue. Make sure that your electric connection on your harness is in tight and your lights are working properly. Make sure that your jack is all the way up. Your boat needs to be firmly tied down to the trailer. A wind strap is not a tie down. Check that your tires are properly inflated, check them for tread wear, cuts, and that the lug nuts are tight. Check the hubs and bearings and repack with grease if needed. If you tow your boat a lot, consider making up an emergency kit with a spare wheel and tire, hub assembly, bearings, grease, extra tie downs, spare light bulbs, and road flares. If you guys are anywhere in Central Florida, stop by Gator Ford, let the great people here hook you up with a great deal on an F-150 or other great Ford truck. And that is your tip of the week. How long have you been guiding here in Florida? Uh, going on nine years now. Nine, nine, yeah, next year's my tenth year. I, I grew up bottom fishing. For like the grouper? For grouper, and and, yeah, and all that, yes. And um, so as I got older, I, I transformed myself into the flats. Right. You know, but now I'm finding myself going back to the old days. Going back to your roots. Go, going back to the roots and getting back to like coming out here doing this, you yeah. know, coming out doing some grouper fishing. Mm -hmm. Each captain we go out and we do a show with, we always ask him this question. I want you to think real hard. If God came down and said, Lee Blick, for the rest of your life, there's only going to be one fish that you can catch, what species fish would that be and why? You know, it, it'd be a toss-up between the Kobe and the Kingfish. And why? Just because of the, the, the burst of speed they have, mm -hmm. just the power. You know, it, like that? Like, just like that. See, just, we're sitting here talking. Yeah, just like that. And it, and it goes, you know. Yeah. We'll, well let you... Uh, Oh, gee, oh, yeah, I hit that rod and it changed the, yeah. that was a big one. He bit through that, he bit through, I mean, bit through wire. It's just clean, as clean can be. This is where the fun is. You're right, anybody can bring out that heavy tackle. Right. And anybody can sit there and horse a fish in. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, light tackle, baby. That's where it's that's at. That's where it's at. I mean, you, you, I've had more clients catch bonita mm -hmm. and, and mackerel and kingfish on these light tackles. Right and look at me and tell me, you know that, that snook and redfish, they way overrated. When your clients get in the boat and you ask them, so what y'all looking to do? And they're like, we just want to bend rods. <laughs> the guys that show up with like the four big coolers to bring their new their fillets home, and they've got to have it in order to have a successful trip, they usually don't do that well. The guys that are like, dude, we just want to get, we don't care if we catch a fish, we just want to get out and just have a nice day. Those are the guys that kill it. People go to the fish house or the fish market grocery store, they buy their fish that's been frozen and all that. You take one of these king mackerel, or you take one of those any fish, and you when you get back to the dock, you put him on the table, you clean him, and throw him right in the greaser, right on the grill. Dude, you don't know what, if, if you're buying fish, you don't know what fish is. People don't realize what fresh fish really tastes like. Yeah. You know, I tell them all the time, I say, you, you don't know what, you know. Oh, it's fresh. I just got it at the market. <laughs> Wait, no, no. You no. freshly got it. And I'll tell you something else, folks. If you go to a fish market to look for fish in the fish's hole, if he's got the cloudy looking eyes and his gills, his gills should be a bright red. That's the things that are inside the little flap. They should be a bright red. If they're gray, you don't want it. Cloudy eyes and gray things. You know. Yeah, you don't, you don't want it. And that, a lot of times that's when they fillet it and they put that fillet out there, you know. After that, after it's been sitting like that for a while, yeah. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Well, I'm going to tie up another one, see if we can catch a fish. Yeah, another big Spanish, I think. That'd be a schoolie. A schoolie? Looks like a Spanish. Looks like a big Spanish, yeah. Big Spanish, bro. It is a big Spanish mackerel. You want me to land him for you? If you'd like. Tell you what, lots of times when you come out here and find the kingfish, you'll find a lot of these Spanish mackerel mixed in. These are really fun because they're really good for the kids. You know, they're not quite as big as a big smoker king would be. Big smoker king could be tough for an eight, nine, ten year old, kind of wear them out maybe a little quick. But if you get on a bunch of the kingfish with some of these mixed in, the kids can reel these in all day, nice and easy on them. 
Lots of action. They see the teeth. Really, really a good fish. Yeah, kids love toothy critters. Yes, they do. Good job. Good job, hey. brother. Lee Blick, you the man. Way to put us on, bro. Guys, hope you enjoyed this week's episode as much as we enjoy bringing it to you. I'd like to give a special thanks to our good friend, Captain Lee Blick. Thank you, Lee, sir. thank you so much, man. Absolutely awesome day. Phenomenal. Absolutely. Phenomenal. Love it out here. Love it. Big, big kingfish action here, March, April, great time of the year to come. If you want to come book a trip with this guy, you can give us a call, 1-866-GAMEFISH is the number. For more great fishing info, you can log on to the website, realanimalsfishingteam.com. Don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook at Facebook slash Real Animals. And until next week, do yourself a favor and take a kid fishing. They will be watching us. They were big fans of yours. I will tell you that right now. Oh, they got to get out more, they, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so they were fans of mine, not Mike. Uh, they, they said Billy. Oh, okay, cool. They did say Billy. <laughs> <laughs>